And we're closing in on Election Day, and as part of our commitment to you, we have invited each congressional candidate in to answer a few questions and help you decide with whom you'd like to support. Joining us right now is Congressman John Sarbanes, the incumbent Democrat for District 3. Sir, thanks for the time today. Thank you. A right. few words if you'd like. Sure. Well, I'm running for re-election. Of course, this will be my fifth term. I've really tried to put a premium on constituent service, listening carefully to my constituents, working as hard as I can, maintaining integrity. I've always said I can't guarantee that everyone will, will agree with me 100% of the time, but I can commit myself to those three basic principles of public service. And hopefully, if I do that well, people will want to send me back. All right, sir, a few questions for you right now, sure. if you've got the time. Earlier this month, the president said he's going to delay a pledge to unilaterally affect immigration here in the U.S. until after the November elections. Now, if you're reelected, is this a move you're in favor of, or do you prefer the president go through Congress toward handling the immigration issue? It's always preferable for the president to work with Congress, and I think uh, hopefully after these elections, maybe we'll get a signal from the House Republican leadership that they want to get back to a bipartisan discussion on this and find a solution to the immigration problem. And so I'd like to see that happen in Congress, in the House of Representatives um, and the Senate. I understand that when there's gridlock and dysfunction, uh, the president looks um, to the executive action as a remedy. But if possible, we should always come through Congress. All right, sir. Next question for us right now. Despite an unemployment rate right now around 6 percent, the most recent numbers had it at 5.9 percent. 92 million Americans are still not working right now. Now, the White House is touting around 10 million new jobs created in more than 50 weeks. But with more than 100 million people not working, if elected, how do you correct that and bridge that gap? We've got to do a few things. First and foremost, I think you direct some uh, tax incentives and benefits towards small businesses and entrepreneurs because that's where a lot of the jobs are created in this country. Let's turn our focus away from always looking out for Wall Street and focus on Main Street and building jobs on Main Street. Secondly, I think you invest in infrastructure. Uh, we have a lot of bridges and tunnels and highways that need repairing, school construction that needs to be done across the country. If you do that, you create a lot of jobs. There's a big ripple effect there from construction. And thirdly, let's really put our emphasis behind American manufacturing. That can come back, come roaring back in a way that will create a lot of jobs. A manufacturing job has the most multiplier effect in the economy of any kind of job that you can create. So let's invest in jobs every way we can, manufacturing, infrastructure and providing those incentives for small businesses. And finally this morning for you right now, the most recent Real Clear Politics average has a congressional approval rating overall at 13 yeah. percent. Suffice to say that's not very good. If reelected, what do you do to reconnect with the populace and the electorate? Well, I think I've got um, a partial solution to this. I think people are really angry at Washington because they think that the money crowd runs the show down there, PACs and, you know, big money and lobbyists and everyday people don't have a voice. And I've introduced something called the Government by the People Act, H.R. 20. It would create a small donor matching system, make it possible for candidates, members of Congress, to fund their campaigns by turning to everyday citizens and earning public matching funds and not having to chase the PACs and the big money. The good news there is then when you get to Washington, instead of leaning towards the PACs and the big money crowd, you can keep representing the people who sent you there. So that's one way, I think a good way, to begin to restore trust in government. All right, sir. He is Congressman John Sarbanes going for re-election in District 3. Thank you for the time today. Thank you. We'll have this for you at ABC2news.com throughout Election Day to best inform you from making your decision.